Hey Tribe family, uh, welcome to Tribe Life Groups. It is Sunday morning, and if you're checking this out, hopefully you have already, as is your custom, downloaded the Tribe Tracker that Kimberly has put up online. Thank you, Kimberly, for doing that. Um, today, uh, I want you to take out your Bibles. Woo-woo! Turn, turn it to John chapter 6. John chapter 6. Uh, today, we're going to look at Jesus feeding the multitudes. Now, when I say that, many of you already know the event in history that Jesus, where he did this and the miracle that was performed and uh, all the characters involved, the disciples, Jesus himself, the crowd that was coming towards him, the boy who who had the the, the little bit of food that Jesus took and he blessed it and multiplied and fed the folks. And some of you are even thinking about, yeah, and I even remember that when it was done, uh, I always thought they were really messy because they had like 12 baskets of stuff left over. They had that much garbage thrown around, but it was food. And so they were able to put it back. And I always thought that, then I realized, I'm like, wait a minute. They started with this little bit of food, a couple of fish, a couple of loaves, and Jesus fed a multitude of people. Actually, history actually tries to do the math. We're talking multiple thousands of people that were probably fed with this guy's Lunchable. I mean, it was kind of like kids' meal at Chick Fil A, and he just gave it to Jesus, and Jesus went, "What you poo?" Um, and so let's look at that. John chapter six. Let's look at the te- the, the 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 scripture text. John chapter six. We're going to look at verse four and following. And as we're reading this, I want to ask you this question. Or this is the main point that you're going to study in your tribe tracker later. This is just to kick you off. You know that. Just to send you off to study. Jesus teaches us to do two things. He teaches us not only to meet spiritual needs, which, by the way, is the most important part. Okay? Uh, But he also teaches us that physical needs are also important. Now, from the start, students, I I want to challenge you with something. Um... It is vitally important that as we serve the Lord and look to meet people's physical needs, we never do that apart from sharing the gospel because it would be a sad state of affairs if looking back someone had a full stomach and did not have the gospel message because we are commanded by God to share the gospel message. All right, it's kind of like this. If it worked this way, it'd be like, let's say somebody is well-fed, well-clothed. They have all this stuff because Christians have supplied all of this, but we never shared the gospel. They never came to Christ, and they ended up in hell for eternity. As opposed to we share the gospel, we preach the gospel. God opens up their heart to salvation, and we meet their physical needs. They may not have it all met, and sometimes they may go hungry, but eternity they will spend at the banquet table of Christ that is the most important thing. You got to remember that, okay? Because some people will, will push you uh, to really, that, that Christians are all about meeting people's social needs, and that's the most important thing. I want you to hear me say this, and don't miss this. It is important, but it is not the most important thing. The most important thing is that we share the gospel. And as we share the gospel, we will see needs that we will be able to meet. And that's what we do, all right? Share the gospel give them the answer to the ultimate question, which is Jesus's conquering and defeat of sin in their life, and that he's king, all right? So let's look. John chapter 6. Let's jump in here. You ready? Here we go. John chapter 6. We're going to start with verse 4. Let's see what it says. Now, the Passover, which was the feast of the Jews, was at hand meaning it was close, it was about to happen. Lifting up his eyes and seeing that a large crowd was coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, Yo, Philip, uh, where are we to buy bread so that these people may eat? And of course, you're seeing this whole crowd coming up, and Philip goes, "Uh, Jesus, that's a lot of folks. Uh, Philip probably takes out his billfold, starts to look, uh, and then all he's got is a couple of Starbucks gift cards, one Chick-fil-A, half used, 50 cent on it. I'm just kidding. But Philip says, where are we to buy the bread <laughs> so that the people may eat? And he said this, and, and he said this, check this out. And he said this to test him for he himself, look at this, uh, 
Jesus said these things, like where we're going to feed this crowd, how we're going to feed this crowd so they can eat. And uh, he said this to test the disciples to see what they would say. And Philip said, where are we to buy bread so that these people may eat? And then back to verse 6, I think it is. He said to the rest, he said this to test them, for he himself knew what he would do. Jesus knew what he would do. Philip continued. He answered again, saying, 200 denarii worth of bread would not even, would not even be enough for each of them to have a little bit of bread. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. And I always wondered what the other disciples thought when when Andrew brought this little guy up and said, Hey, I, I got some bread and some fish. I wonder if the disciples would, Dude, shut up. Yeah, it's stupid. We can't do this. We're only going to make them mad if we try to feed them this. But check out what happens here. Andrew Simon Peter's brother said to him, There's a boy here who has five barley loaves and, and two fish, but what are they for so many? But yet, but yet, Andrew brought him forward. Check it out. How is this for so many? And Jesus said, Have the people sit down. Now there was much grass in, the, in this place, so the men sat down, about 5,000 in number, which also means there are probably women and children in the midst too. So Jesus then took the loaves and he, that he, and he had given thanks and he distributed them to those who were seated. So also he did it with the fish. As much as they wanted. That's so good to hear. It wasn't just enough to make them not hungry anymore. It was as much as they wanted. And when they had eaten, check this out, when they had eaten their fill, so important. Look at how God provided from such a small amount, multiplied it, and he filled them. He told his disciples, gather up the leftover fragments that nothing may be left or nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, filled 12 baskets with fragments from the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten. And when the people saw the sign, very important. When people saw the sign that he had done, they said, This indeed, the prophet who is come into the world. Now, as you read the rest of the verses on your tribe tracker, you're going to see how this idea that Jesus not only supplied the bread and the fish here, that Jesus is the bread of life. And I don't want you to miss this because the thing about always being hungry for food and always feeding people only food is they will always have a spiritual hunger. And that spiritual hunger will never be satisfied, satisfied apart from Christ. And so Christ is not only saying, hey, yes, we have an opportunity to serve people and care about people's physical needs, but they also need to know that even more importantly than that actual bread right there, is me, the spiritual bread that fills their spiritual hunger. And students, here's the question I want to leave you with this morning as you spend time in your drug tracker. Have we been busy trying to fill that hunger spot in our lives with so many other things when Jesus is the only thing that can fill it? And when Jesus fills that space, there is never a lack and you are always filled as much as you want. Does it make sense? You can never have enough Jesus because when you have Jesus, you have all of him. All of him. So I'm going to ask you today, ask the Lord to meet that spiritual need in your life. And then ask the Lord to open your eyes to see if, number one, you can share that bread, Jesus, bread of life, with someone around you. And then maybe there's an opportunity to serve someone to help maybe a physical need they have. Maybe that's helping your brother or sister clean your room. Maybe that's helping a neighbor buying his groceries. Maybe cutting his yard, cutting his grass. Uh, maybe it's an opportunity to, to see someone who, who needs a meal today and just buy them a little meal and give it to them as you drive by them. Anything that for that. But here's the thing. Always share the good news message with it. Like if, you, if you're driving by and you give somebody some food who's standing on the corner and you want to feed them, when you feed them, say, hey, 
This will feed you. But Jesus is the bread of life. You need him. You can easily do that and say, God bless you. Have a great day. All right, let me pray for you. And then go spend some time with your tribe tracker in your lesson today. All right, really important to do this because he's the bread of life and his word is, it'll sustain you, it'll fill you, and it's wonderful. Uh, let's pray. Father, thank you so much for the tribe family, an opportunity to study your word kind of together online. Thank you for our teachers who are still teaching, our students who are still learning, and people who are even watching this video. We love you, Lord, and I pray we would know that you are the bread of life. And you also call us to share that bread of life with others around us. Help us to see others. So many times, God, we get so focused on ourselves. Help us to see the others in our life that we can bless by sharing the good news of the kingdom and that you're the bread of life. We love you in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. I don't know if you realize this, but if you did not show up last Wednesday to the midweek mashup, you missed out on a treat, but no, we missed you. But if you were there, thank you for being there. It was awesome to see you. Uh, just to let you know, this coming Wednesday, we're going to have Tribe on campus. It's going to start in the youth room. Snack Shack's going to be open. And then we're hoping to move to the JWAC so that we all can spread out and worship the Lord together, have some fun stuff that we do as the Tribe, and just have a blast. So I love you. Talk to you soon.